I have the pleasure of being the last person up here uh, talking about mobile. There have been some great presentations. Uh, we're going to do it a little differently. We're going to talk about the first thing in mobile that everyone sees every single day, and that's the home screen of your uh, device. And the reason why we're talking about the home screen of your device is because there's really been no real research prior to the report that's now on your tables, or at least the executive summary, that's really looking at why consumers spend so much time on the home screen and what it actually means to the people that have been in this room and what opportunities and threats <clears throat> it provides to all of these stakeholders. So we only have 10 minutes, so I just want to jump into this fairly quickly. We all know what this is. We call this the home screen of your device. We've seen a couple presentations uh, just uh, 10 minutes ago talking about how you pick that phone up 150 times a day. Nielsen, Lumi, Arbitron, they quantify it at around 150 and up. If you look even closer, you see that 26%, 26% of all time on Android is actually spent by a consumer flipping back and forth on their home screen. Now, no one has ever said, why do, you, why do consumers do that? It's because of two things found time, as we heard earlier from Gannett, in the fear of missing something. But I'm not going to spend too much time talking about that because it's all in the full report. I encourage you to download the full report, uh, and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. But we do, what we do want to talk about is what that actually means that it's so important. But first, let's think about what we see on what I call a dumb home screen. Today, the home screen is fairly dumb. What do we see on it? I might see that I missed a call from my coworker. I might see that I have a text from my uh, co-presenter. I might see that I have a um, reminder that next week is my anniversary. Actually, that's, that's really smart. Well, that, that is a brilliant application of a smartphone. But otherwise, there's really not much happening on an intelligent device. What's happening on the smartphone isn't all that exciting. But even given where it is today, still, it's valued at a billion dollars per quarter square inch by a prominent VC that's right up the road. So if you remember your geometry, that's equal to $16 billion per square inch of home screen. And why is that? Because we pick the phone up 100, two times, 100 or 200 times a day to see what's available. So here I stand in Silicon Valley talking about something that's big, that's worth a billion dollars per quarter square inch and is dumb. That's like throwing chum and blood into the waters for everyone to figure out how do I take advantage of this experience. Like I said, not too many people have actually been looking at this opportunity. Roger Entner, why don't you come on up, Roger, uh, who used to run the telecom practice at Nielsen is one of the few analysts that actually has been looking at this for quite some time. And I'm going to turn it over to Roger to talk a bit more about the types of things that you've seen in the industry and, and why and, and how that might impact folks in the ecosystem. Thank you, Greg. You know, when we look at the, um, at the home screen, I, I started looking at it early 2009 when HTC came out with uh, its Sense uh, a home screen solution and looked at how does this really affect consumers. And one of the really fascinating things I, I saw was customers who are using, at that time, Sense, and later on improved with other uh, solutions, were happier with their device, happier with the service, and used it more. And that is really a fascinating insight, that when you are customizing and, and improving and making the home screen more relevant, it becomes more engaged with the consumer. Shortly thereafter, you know, um, Microsoft came out with uh, Windows 7 and Active Tiles. You know, it's really uh, a new way for the consumer to do that as well. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, I would say, you know, uh, Windows uh, for phone is like the best uh, operating system nobody's using. But that is a really, really innovating uh, uh, scenario. And the situation has really accelerated. In the last two, in, in the last year, you know, we've had more launches of um, uh, active home screen solution and lock screen solutions than we've had in the entire history together. We've had um, Samsung jumping in. 
We've had um, HTC improving it of not only changing the home screen and allowing consumers to uh, customize it, but also adding Blink Feed that on the lock screen lets you customize content and information that you're using. And th this is really a, a and, and the home screen and the lock screen are this nexus. Everybody has to go through this gateway. And, you know, the, the featured speaker uh, last night, you know, spent a significant amount on, uh, on funding Aviate, which has created quite a lot of buzz uh, and, and completely changes the look and feel uh, of the device. So it's, it's really a, a compelling way of how to change the user experience without owning the, the device. So uh, let me paraphrase. So there's a gazillion dollars of market cap from the guys that make the phone, put the software on the phone, and some top silicon investors putting money into Mobile Posse and to Aviate, all trying to disintermediate the people that are in this room. Exactly. That, so, so what is the impact if I have Flipboard on every Samsung phone for Gannett? What, what does that mean to Gannett? How do you think about the types of things that you're working on. What does it mean to the New York Times? What does it mean if Aviate were on every phone, if you are a small app developer trying to become discovered? All right, so uh, why don't we hop forward and kind of summarize quickly. We can only touch on this in, in 10 minutes, but obviously, Roger, we have a couple of constituencies exactly. that we have to talk about, right? You know, publishers really need to get started. And, and take control of the home and the lock screen and, and help create a, a comprehensive user experience that, that extends beyond the app. Because here it gives you the opportunity to control the entire experience on that device without having to make the device. And, and it's an opportunity, if you don't step up now, you will regret that for the rest of your career, however long it will last. You know, it might be shorter than, than, uh, than you might wish because it's such a, a pivotal moment, you know. Uh, I don't think any carriers are here, but it's, it's a terrific opportunity for a carrier to also brand it. And, you know, Verizon did that uh, way back when with feature phones. They had a standardized user experience and it served them really well. And the, the, the scores they got for user experience from in, in the surveys was far superior than the hodgepodge everybody else had. And it, it's their first thing to lose if they want to step up to the plate because people will only change this when the current solution doesn't, doesn't work for them. And you know, the OEMs are seeing this as a, as a terrific opportunity for them to differentiate. Because right now, if you're just having Android or, or any other OS, the stock OS, the only thing you can differentiate on is a little bit around the form factor. Do you have square uh, edges or rounded edges? Whoopee. You know? So that's why HTC got in. That's why Samsung got in. But it's, I think, really very important for the people in, the, in this room as publishers to take control of the destiny. Otherwise, somebody else will drive that destiny for them. Thank you, Roger. We're going to uh, wrap up. Mobile Posse is obviously in the active home screen space. We're the only player in this space that has an SDK that would allow any publisher, any game provider, any platform to actually bring the best of active home screen to their application or to their uh, service. Um, I want to encourage everyone to go to mobileposse.com slash CDX where you can download the entire uh, report which has uh, data from a thousand response survey from Phoenix Marketing Intelligence and lots of data from Nielsen that we have on their passive usage. So I'd encourage you to uh, do that. There are a few questions. I'm really curious about how the audience thinks about the active home screens. So if you do go there, and I encourage you to do, one, you might win a iPad Air. Two, I'd love to get your responses to those few questions. I think it'd be very helpful for us. So with that, if we have time for a question or two, Drew, I think that's a wrap for us. One question. All right, thank All right. you very much. Thank you.